Benvenuti a tutti! Welcome to a new video in which we are going to talk about uh, JITGEN and we are going to discover some more objects and functions that we can find inside it. So, let's dive in! So, last time uh, we saw these two objects, the norm object and the S norm, so the signed uh, normalized coordinates object. To refresh you the memory, the norm object uh, uh, creates um, coordinates for every cell inside the, the matrix that comes as an input creates coordinates that range from 0 to 1, so normalized coordinates. The signed uh, normalized coordinates object instead creates coordinates that go between minus 1 and 1 for every cell of the matrix that comes inside the chip gen. Now, um, so I would like one thing to be pretty clear, which is uh, there is a difference between planes and dimensions. So the norm and the S norm object will have inside some channels uh, relative to the dimensions of the matrix. So this matrix, for example, is two-dimensional. So the norm and S-norm object will have inside two channels that generate coordinates for every, for every dimension. While uh, uh, the matrix that comes inside will have four plane, which then we could switch using the X, Y, Z, and W and the alpha, red, green, and blue uh, nomenclature. So for example, something like this. But this has nothing to do with uh, the channels inside the norm object. So I've seen, uh, in some patches, uh, I've seen uh, something like this. People connect this here and then connect this, uh, or connect this directly to the, to the input one. And they think, okay, since I say switch x, this is going to give me the x coordinate. No, the x coordinate is only generated by uh, the norm object. So the coordinates in general are only generated by the norm and the s norm object. There's another object that generates coordinates that we didn't see last time, which is the cell object. Now the cell object generates coordinates, but not normalized. It just generates the coordinates that go from zero to the number of the cell in each dimension minus one. So for example, for the first dimension, it will generate coordinates that go from zero to 319. And for the second dimension, it will generate vertical coordinates that go from zero to 239. Okay, for every cell of this matrix. So this is another object that works with the coordinates. But as said, uh, don't mix between the planes and the dimensions. The planes are simply how many channels are inside the matrix that comes inside and the dimensions are relative to how many cells that are inside the matrix and how they are organized. For example, in a one-dimensional matrix that will look like this, the cells are organized in a singular horizontal row of cells. While if we have two dimensions, the cells are organized in a two-dimensional grid. Okay, so this is pretty important, not to mix uh, these two concepts. Now, in this video, we are going to see especially, let's connect this to norm, uh, let's actually Let's actually take this JIT gen and put it on the side because I think we are going to start with uh, basically with a new JIT gen. So let's give it a title here and let's call it chord. And now this one here, we are going to basically get rid of uh, this absolute thing. We are getting rid of all these, um, getting rid of all these uh, notes that I wrote last time and we are going to start from scratch. So, I want to show you in this video how you can generate some graphing using the norm and uh, the, the coordinates generator objects. Okay, so we are going to see an object called greater than. Now, this object is a Boolean object and this exists also in the normal max world. And this object works like this it gives us a zero or a one as an output. So, it only gives us a two different outputs. And uh, it gives us a one if we satisfy the condition inside the object. So, for example, if the number that comes in is greater than the number that is inside the object, the object will output a 1. If the number that comes in is smaller, the object will output a 0. So, it only outputs these two values. Okay, it doesn't give us any other different value. So, this we can use, for example, to say if the x coordinates are greater than 0 0.5, then this object will give us a 1, which we could use then, for example, for the red color. Okay, so this object is giving us a 1 from here on, because the coordinates up until here are less than 0 0.5, the x coordinates. And uh, after that, they're greater than 0 0.5. 
and so it gives us a 1. If we connected this to the y coordinates, it will be the same but uh, vertically, right? Because the coordinates go from 0 to 1 uh, on the y axis, so if, these, uh, if the coordinates are greater than 0 0.5, this will be a 1, which we can use then to fill whatever color we want. Or will give us a 0 that uh, it will just be black. For example, we could... Uh, for example, let's load the movie, people.mov. For example, we could uh, use this also uh, to multiply the movie that comes inside. And then we will see only half of the movie. Now, take a look at this. The, the multiplication operator is applying this uh, multiplication to all the channels inside the, um, the vector in the input, right? It's taking all the planes and it's multiplying all of them by this value, okay? So this is already a vector operation. So it's like if we will take the single plane singularly from the input, multiply singularly for, the, for our value, and then put them inside the vector. This is all done automatically by simply using a simple multiplication operator. So all the operations in JITGen are applied to vectors as well. Okay, we don't have to singularly uh, unpack, let's say, the input and then apply the operation. We can just apply them um, with the, these operators that make vectors operation. Okay, so going back here, so we could, for example, from that, create a square. For example, we could say, if this input is greater than uh, 0 0.1, for example, but is also less than 0 0.9, the x value, and then we could multiply these two values together. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. If this is less than 0 0.1. We could multiply these two values together, then use this as the red color, and we would have this, right? Because when this is greater than 0.1, we are going to have 1, which we can use to fill the red channel. And if this is greater than 0.9, then we're going to have black, because this, the, um, the condition inside this object is not satisfied. This gives us a 1, only if the number that comes inside is satisfies the condition. So the condition is in this case is to be less than 0.9. So if this is greater than 0.9, it's going to give us a 0. Right, so if we multiply these two colors together, because uh, if we use them just one by one, this is what we get, right? One when this is less than 0 0.9, and then zero when this is greater than 0 0.9. But if we multiply these two ones together, then we get basically uh, the difference between them. Okay, then we can do the same thing for the y, for example, greater than 0 0.1, less than 0 0.9, and then we can multiply that, which will look like this. We can multiply this uh, with the other value, which will give us then a rectangle. Okay, so this is pretty nice. Let's actually delete those. Now I want to show you another object that is also very interesting, with which we can achieve very interesting uh, effects. Very interesting. And this one is the modulo operator. So let's see how uh, this uh, object works. The module operator exists as well inside Max, and it works like this. Basically, it always rounds up uh, the values that we input to the number that we input here. So, for example, if I input here uh, 11, this will round up this value um, to 1, which is the difference between 10 and 11. So it always takes the difference between these two values, and uh, gives us the difference. Okay, if I say 10, the difference between 10 and 10 is 0, so it will give us a 0. Okay, so this is all the object does. It just wraps down the numbers to the maximum value as uh, the number that we use as an argument. Okay, so it will never go above 10 and will never go below 0, unless we use negative numbers, I mean. So, for example, if we input 0, it will just give us a 0. But for every number, it will just give us the difference until 0 0.9.99. And then when we go to 10, it will wrap back to 0. Okay, so we can use that, for example, like this. If we say the modulo of 0 0.5, then attach this to the x, is what we get, right? Because it's going to be 0 and then going up to 0 0.5 and then... Um, uh, restarting from 0 and going up to 0 0.5. If we multiply this by 2, 
the x values, we basically get more of these stripes, right? Because 0 0.5 then starts back to 0 0.5 and then arrives to 1, uh, the x coordinates, and then uh, uh, this arrives to 2 at the end, but it gets wrapped between 0 0.5 uh, in, the, in the middle. So we can, for example, multiply this by 100, and then not to use 0 0.5 as a modulo, but for example, let's say 5. This is what we get. And then we could use the greater than operator to say, okay, when this is greater than 2.5, then give us a 1, otherwise give us a 0. And we obtain these nice stripes, which we could then, uh, for example, still use uh, as a multiplier for our video. This is what we will get. Oh, sorry, not here, but here. So as a multiplier, right? Otherwise, we can just have fun creating some shapes. For example, uh, we could also animate those lines. Let me introduce you to another object, which is the param object. Now, the param object is an object that allows us to pass values inside the JIT gen from the max outside patch. Okay, so let's create a parameter and call it time. Now, time is a name that I just chose myself. I could have called this whatever. I chose to call this time, and now time is the name of our parameter. It's like if I created an attribute for this object, and I can give it a default value of zero, right? Remember, you don't have to put the dot in JITGEN because everything is float, so you don't have to put the dot inside operators to have a float operation. Everything is by default a float operation. So we could uh, uh, use the time, for example, by summing it, to the coordinates. So we can do something like that. But I don't have to necessarily connect them with the cables. I could also just create the parameter there and then write the name of the parameter inside this operator. And this operator will understand that I'm referring to the value inside the parameter time. Okay, this is not something that you can do in max. You cannot just do this in max. This will not work. So this is something special from JITGEN. And uh, in order to put this name inside here, I have to first declare a parameter. If I don't declare a parameter but still use the name, this will, is going to be an error, okay? So remember, uh, you need a parameter for that. So now, um, let's delete this stuff. Let's actually delete this thing, we don't need them. So uh, this is how we can pass a parameter to the, to the JITGEN environment. We create a message with a dollar uh, variable thing to kind of pass our number in, and then we can uh, pass just a number, and this number is going to be used inside our JITGEN algorithm. So, pretty cool. We could use an object uh, to uh, to get uh, a continuous uh, growing number, for example, the Crocker object, which gives us the amount in milliseconds since it was created. But now, this number is going to be so big, uh, so fast, that we don't even see the, the stripes moving. So, for example, if we multiply for a smaller number, then we can see them moving. It's still pretty fast, so we can multiply this for 0 0.01, for example. And now they're going to be moving in a ni nice, slow motion. Okay, we could use the Y coordinates for that, and we will have a vertical uh, kind of slide, which is pretty nice. Remember also that if you want to have like a gradient, we just need to multiply these numbers apply to that, we have just to have to multiply these numbers by, for example, the y coordinates. That will give us a gradient that goes from 1 to 0 on the y uh, axis. Okay, we could also kind of um, mix these two different effects that we created here, like this, and have the stripes only applied uh, inside the square that we created. Okay, so this is how uh, the greater than, smaller than, and there is actually also the equal to object operator. This is another Boolean operator that gives us a one only when the number is equal to the number that we write inside the object. Uh, then there is actually also the smaller or equal than operator, which will give us a number, the one if the condition inside is met. And then as you probably guessed, there is also the greater than uh, or equal operator. Okay, so these are all objects that we also have inside normal max. Could, for example, like offset uh, these uh, stripes uh, of uh, one unit and use the other stripes for another color. For example, we could do something like this. Uh, we could still use the. We could still use the um, the time thing, and then we can say plus uh, two point five, for example module 5, and this we could use, for example, for the green. Exactly. 
and now we could multiply this by that as well so yeah we got a nice uh, by offsetting these uh, the stripes of 2.5, which is a uh, alpha hour modulo, so the difference between uh, the blue and the red, basically, uh, we get a nice uh, interleaved uh, pattern of stripes. Okay, so I would like to stop here and uh, wrap it up. So in this video, we started to see how we can create our shapes from scratch inside JitGen, and even how we can animate them. And we saw how to use the smaller than, greater than, and the modulo operator. All right. So I hope this was useful and uh, in the next videos we are going to see a lot more objects, it's going to get uh, much more interesting. We are going to see how we can modify the input video and how we can create some more interesting uh, shapes. So check uh, the pattern to download the patch, check uh, join the pattern to support me and get some more patches, join the Discord channel and uh, see you all in the next video. Happy patching and see you soon. Ciao ciao.